Welcome to AI, the future of us, a podcast style video series that explores the ways AI is shaping our future and how can how we can prepare for the changes that lie ahead. I'm your host, Ferhat Tekiner from Google Cloud, and today we are joined by Donna Shutt, who is Head of Applied Analytics and AI Solutions at Google Cloud. Thank you for being here today, Donna. Thanks for having me, Farad. So, could you please tell us a bit about your background and expertise in the field of AI? Sure. Um, yeah. So, actually, as of today, um, I lead a technical solutions management team focused on generative AI. And prior to this, um, I led applied analytics and AI solutions, as well as worked in our professional services organization. Uh, helping some of our most advanced customers and actually internal teams as well uh, build their machine learning platforms. That's awesome. How did you become interested in AI and what do you find the most fascinating about it? Yeah, so um, growing up I played chess at an international level and that really sparked my passion for how we design AI systems to help humans. And AlphaZero is a, a great example of that. So. In chess, uh, when you evaluate a position, you look at kind of three things. Material, which is uh, their points uh, given to pieces, um, space, and then piece activity. And what AlphaZero essentially did is it changed the way that we evaluate those three things. So placed more emphasis on space and piece activity uh, and introduced new concepts. And that really uh, is a good example of what I love about AI is that it pushes the boundaries of our thinking and it can be applied to so many different uh, problems that you're always learning. Wow, great. I didn't know that, actually. So, And <laughs> one of the, the, the funny things that I heard recently is that LLMs are not good at playing chess as well. So I'll, I'll <laughs> definitely you know, be catching up with you on that. So I, I want to look into a bit of the challenges around it, you know, how we can close the gaps in between the data and you know, uh, machine learning as well. And in your opinion... What are the main overlaps that you are you see traditionally for two separate disciplines, right? So for data analytics and data engineering and machine learning, based on your experience? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, it always starts with a business problem. Um, so whatever problem that you're looking to solve, first of all, it depends on you know what is the right approach for that problem. It could be analytics or it could be machine learning. And then, as you mentioned, um, I think we've seen them traditionally be separated, but, you know, ideally um, you want a common vocabulary between those two teams where, you know, the business metrics that the analysts are reporting on are the same as the features that data scientists use. Uh, So an example of that would be, for example, conversion ratio uh, within the marketing domain. Um, And then I think when you look Uh, to data engineering and uh, ML engineering, I think building an ML enabled solution is an iterative process between uh, data engineering, machine learning engineering, and actually also app engineering, where the ML engineering uh, team really leverages the data sets and features produced by the data engineering team. Um, And then the ML engineering team will feed back those data requirements uh, to the data engineering team. So, I mean, really, machine learning models are only as good as the data that's provided. Thank you. And, and that, that overlap is, you know, I, I totally agree. And just to expand on that a little bit, how do you see data ops and ML ops with LLMs in mind evolving in the next few years? Because we are seeing a lot of applications. We are seeing lots of new approaches coming through as well. Where do you think that will be leading to? Yeah, um, so I think LLMs really allow for faster experimentation in many cases without the need for uh, heavy data preparation, which was needed to train machine learning models previously. Um, We're still in the very early stages of generative AI with many customers experimenting, um, whereas automation is an advanced characteristic of a mature technology. And so, you know, this is still very much an evolving field. However, we expect generative AI to take a similar uh, trajectory to traditional machine learning when you know, emerging machine learning efforts matured into ML engineering. So for example, um, we currently see a lot of ad hoc prompt engineering and very nascent prompt evaluation and prompt management processes. At the same you know, time, we see uh, experimental approaches applied to other uh, methods of model adaptation like model tuning 
And this is similar to the early stages of ML workflow implementations before the introduction of frameworks like TFX and Kubeflow. Um, we also already see, you know, the divergent from established MLOps practices to what's optimal for working with LLMs. You know, most customers will likely uh, adapt foundational models to their requirements through prompt engineering or optimized tuning techniques like parameter efficient tuning, reinforcement learning from human feedback, um, you know, distillation where uh, knowledge from a larger model can be learned by a smaller model will become an important aspect of preparing models for efficient deployment and surveying, and then um, integration of LLM models with external sources of knowledge will also become a common pattern. So you know, organizations will need to evolve their MLOps uh, processes and tooling to better accommodate these new techniques. And that's really interesting insights, Donna. And I think we'll be seeing you know, lots of different personas taking some of the tasks that you mentioned as well. It will be interesting to see whether this will rely on with the data scientists, ML engineers, data analysts or engineers or even business analysts as well. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would like to focus on the challenges on applying and using generative AI. You know, according to you, what are the examples of how Gen AI is currently being used effectively across the you know, different industries because I know for the fact that you talk to a lot of customers and what are the, what are the things that you are saying? I would like to you know, get a bit more insight on that. Yeah, um, so I think with generative AI, we've really entered a new era, which is defined by intuitive interaction between humans and technology. Um, and you know, areas where we, we see a lot of interest is, for example, in marketing. So uh, being able to very quickly generate content uh, based off of trends uh, that marketeers are seeing, being able to generate content for uh, audiences that's much more personalized. Um, we see it being used in customer service. So, for example, to create chatbots that are more conversational to their uh, customers or assisting support agents by you know, summarizing their case notes, indicating the next step or generating an FAQ where they can look up answers. Um, it's helping engineers uh, by generating code or, you know, suggesting the next lines of code or it can be through, you know, a code bot where developers can uh, talk to and ask questions or for uh, debugging purposes. Um, so those are a few, uh, not all encompassing, but it shows, you know, the wide range of, of impact that it can have. I think certainly we'll be seeing lots of innovative applications in this area. But w within that as well, you know, what value does it bring to the organizations, right? So, you know, there are a lot of interesting applications coming through, but it is, it is sometimes challenging to identify where the value relies. And, and you know, what do you feel around that? Yeah, um, so I think areas where we've uh, seen it create value is uh, it enhances the customer experience, right? So the ability to reach larger client bases by making these interactions more natural and conversational um, improving or, you know, accelerating the time to value. Um, so it's easier to search and understand large amounts of complex data. Um, and then, you know, assisting uh, employees or boosting their productivity. So by generating text, code, image, some of the examples that we just gave uh, very quickly and multimodally. Um, those are a few of the, you know, areas where we've seen it create value. And definitely multimodal, you know, data processing is something that we have been sp speaking around a lot within the past decade or so. And I think this is the moment that we'll be seeing more and more with the, you know, LLMs and generative AI solutions helping us to tap into the potential of the, you know, particular unstructured data, whether it is text or it comes in different forms as well. Uh, and I'd like to look ahead a little bit with AI and, you know, the data analytics as well. So... What do you believe is the most exciting potential, you know, application of AI that we have yet to see, right? Because, you know, we are seeing a lot. There's a lot of noise as well. It is, and I'm sure that what we are speaking now will not be what, you know, it is very difficult to predict the future. But, you know, what do you think around that? Yeah, um, well, I think personally, I'm most excited about solving uh, the big problems around, uh, you know, the, the intersection between people and technology. So uh, around health, education, and then sustainability as well. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, 
uh, AI helping us to discover new drugs, uh, create more tailored education programs to really help get the best out of people, uh, more accurately uh, predict floods and wildfires to help keep people safe in a, you know, a changing environment. Yes, I think I think there's still a lot of potential there to tap into. And, and my last question, and you know, by all means, not the least. So uh, we, we spoke a little bit around it, you know, different type of personas. But what advice would you give? You are very experienced in this area to individuals or other, you know, organizations looking to prepare for future where really AI plays it, you know, significant or more significant role, you know, because if they don't get the value and if, if the competition comes and does it before them, it will be challenging for them. Where do you see that? Where do you see that, the, you know, AI plays even more role within the organizational processes as well? Yeah, um, I would probably recommend by you know, starting to identify use cases uh, for you know an organization uh, where they expect good ROI um, and that are relatively low risk. And you know you can brainstorm by tasks that LLMs are good at, such as search or summarization, generation, rewriting, and then start experimenting. Um, I also, there's a lot of tools right now that make AI much more accessible. And so, um, you know, I would recommend to think about the approach or mix of approaches that uh, you would want to take and then hire accordingly. Um, so for example, you might use out of the box product functionality to quickly build immersive experiences for which you would need application developers. Uh, you might adapt foundational models uh, to your own needs and to differentiate uh, for which you would need data scientists, right? Or you might even train and build your own customized large models uh, using specialized AI infrastructure. And for that, you would need, you know, ML researchers and engineers that are very specialized. Thank you. Yes, and I agree, actually. It is really a multi-objective optimization problem at the end of the day, whether you should be building or whether you should be, you know, buying the solutions, whether you should be using the foundation models or whether you should be, you know, going and, you know, developing your years and training years, whether you should bring your own data sets or your existing data sets. I think there'll be lots of things that we'll see and organizations need to juggle around as well. But I think you are spot on. What are the key, you know, parameters that gets you the, you know, the highest ROI, right? And where you would get the most value is the key. Thank you for joining us, Donna. It has been incredible <laughs> to, you know, hear from you. And we look forward to seeing how AI will really continue to shape the world around us. And hope our viewers will be inspired to embrace its potential and opportunities. Thank you very much. Thanks.